everybody. Happy Sunday. AI. Enough with crappy acoustic music. Welcome everybody to the AI Learning Lab. Let's get learning some AI in a lab that looks like a home office. Mm, we can do it. So if you'd be so kind, share the live and prove that you're not normal. Let your friends make fun of you. Oh, you're into that AI stuff? Really? Really? Is that what we're doing now? We're, we're going we're gonna to play with AI. We're going to ruin all of the world. Is that, that's what we're going to do now? You know it's not environmentally sound. You say you're for the climate. Now you're using artificial intelligence. Do you know how much processing power it takes to, to make an AI? It's a lot. Okay? It's a lot. Mm -mm -mm. Silver Fox, was happening? Woohoo for the early birds. I know. I know, I know, I know. Welcome, everybody. Woo. What are we going to do tonight? What are we going to do tonight? We've been having some, some good, good deep conversations the past few nights. Hola, Missy Aguilar. Take it back. A good evening, take it back. How are you doing, Becky? Oh, oh hey, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> it's Tacky Becky. Tacky Becky, how you doing, Tacky Becky? You good? Are you good? Do 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 do. Sixty minutes had a story tonight on AI. Very cool. I did not see that, but I'm sure I will. I'll at least see pieces of it on the TikTok. Ah! I watched the F1 race this morning. Well. Kind of this afternoon. Didn't start till like 11. Man, that was rough. They're, they were all about passing out in their cars. One guy retired because he got too hot. Lewis Hamilton smacked into his teammate. It was a lot of drama. A lot of drama. Oh, man. All right. We'll get... We'll get. Let some people get in here. Welcome, everybody. We'll get started here shortly. Yeah, I sleep on my shoulder weird. And as I get older, it's it's just a big crunchy mess. <laughs> it's like <laughs> nothing works anymore. It's like that little Louis C.K. bit where he talks about going to the doctor. Doctor, my ankle hurts. And doctor's like, moves it around. And goes, yeah, it's just worn out. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> can't you do something about it? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, only got to see seconds of it while taking care of the kids at night. Yeah, I actually watched most of the uh, the the uh, the F one race in Walmart. <laughs> we were shopping for crap, and I got flu shot. We were shopping for crap, and I'm just watching it. Um, I remember when my bones and joints started making noise that I could hear, and it surprised me. <laughs> there's there's another comedian I forget who it is, but he talks about you know he hit that age where. He, where he, you just make noises getting up. <laughs> like you accomplished something. Because <laughs> you did. You're still vertical. Um, leaving for Europe and don't know how I'll survive without the workshop for two weeks. Ah, I'm sure I'm sure you can listen listen to the, uh, to the lab while you're in uh, while you're in Europe. <laughs> Be at the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> Shh, hang on, Kyle's saying something. 
<laughs> you weirdos. You're all weirdos. We are not weird. We are irregulars. Um, all right, looks like we're starting to get a bunch of people in. Welcome, everybody. Uh, this is the AI Learning Lab. My name is Kyle. Uh, my involvement with this AI stuff is is relatively new, kind of the past two years or so. And this channel is really about the moment that... <laughs> changed everything in my opinion, which is the launch of ChatGPT. So November 30th, 2022 is the inflection point from how I look at things that everything changes um, because that's the date at which the rest of us get access to these really powerful machine learning tools. And it's very, very reminiscent of the early days of the World Wide Web. And I was, I was an entrepreneur back then. I've been an entrepreneur for decades, so I'm unhirable at this point. <laughs> I can only start new shit. <laughs> it's the only place that will have me uh, is, is me. <laughs> um, but the, the early days of the web had a very, very similar energy as to what's going on with this, uh, with this AI stuff. So that's what this channel's about. I'm trying to do a video montage for a song on YouTube. Any AI tool you would recommend? What is that one called? Some of the irregulars were playing with it. Um, there's there's one that you can you basically just type in a description and it actually pulls stock um, stock video um, and stitches it together for you. It 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 makes it look a bit like a corporate kind of video, but if you just want to knock something out. Um, you could do that. The other thing you could play with is Runway ML. I'll go through some tools here in a second. Um, you could play with Runway ML. App.runwayml.com. That one, that one right there. And that will do text to video. If you want to create your own custom video, you can do little four second snippets there and you can extend them up to like 18 seconds. So if you want, like, you know, a woman in a wispy dress walking through a field, you know, with the sun shining. You can just ask for it and it'll go make it. Um, if anyone remembers the name of that that video tool that you uh, you describe your video and then it, it pulls stock, stock video for you. I forget what, I just forget what it's called. Um, anyway, let's, uh, let's get started here. I've got, got a few people in. If you'd be so kind as to share the live uh, out with the world and tap on the screen, even though you may not like me yet, yet, you hear that optimism? You're going to love it here. It's a little odd. We got these folks called Irregulars. They hang out here all the time. It's turned into a whole community. We, we collaborate. We joke. We, we tap the screen a lot. Um, and, uh, and we talk about this AI stuff. And we're kind of learning together. And even though I'm the host, the, <laughs> what, what I can promise you is that I'm not an expert. And if you ask for my qualifications, I have none. And if anyone tells you they do right now, they're full of shit. <laughs> nobody knows. Nobody knows what's happening. Now, does that mean that there are, am, am I saying there are no experts in machine learning and artificial intelligence? No, no. There's lots of people in that. But in this post-inflection point, post-GPT, how are we as businesses and human beings going to use large language models and image generation tools and music generation tools? How are we going to incorporate this stuff into our lives Nobody knows what's going on with that. Nobody. Zero people. Out of 100% of people, 0% have any much more of a clue than anyone else. It's very, very, uh, we're very, very early. And so this channel is just like uh, exploring. Um, Gurmeel Singh. Yes, you said it right. I didn't like you first, but, but like watching your lives nowadays. <laughs> Thank you for your honesty. Listen, when I got in here, I thought you were a pompous ass. I couldn't stand you, as a matter of fact. And the look of you, good Lord, who are you, Rosie O'Donnell? What are you, trying to be Alec Baldwin but fat? Good Lord, you are insufferable. But now, you're kind of charming. I kind of like it. Ah, top of the morning to you. All right, let's, uh, let's, let's dig in here. So if you're brand spanking new to this AI stuff, I will, I will give you a place to start, okay? okay? Okay, 
Yeah, we're going to need you to go on ahead and come on in on Saturday. Yeah. Okay. So, if you're new to this AI stuff, that top URL right there, just go there right now. Don't don't pause. Don't pass go. Don't collect $200. Just go there right now. That's ChatGPT. If you've not played with ChatGPT, you need to go play with ChatGPT. Why? Because you do. Because you do. Because you just do. Because... Everything has changed, but not that many people know it yet. Most jobs are going to be redefined over the next probably two to three years, but let's call it three to five. It's coming very, very fast. So everyone owes it to themselves to go there and start playing. And quite frankly, I think it's even worth going there and paying the 20 bucks to get their more advanced version because it's got a bunch of features that are coming out. I found out. Is it Visla? Yes, Visla. Um, the person that was asking about what AI can I use to make my video montage? Visla. I think it's Visla AI. Hang on, let me go. Let me go look. Let me go look at it. Visla AI. Oh God. Visla.us. Everyone's got anything but a dot com these days. You can't remember anything visla.us you just describe your video and it will go generate um a bunch of uh stock video clips and stitch them together it's pretty cool it's pretty cool um i did i did one um i did one on the live here a few nights back of like someone a fly fisherman fishing on the delaware and for the most part it got the footage right it was it was definitely the Delaware for most of the shots. It was pretty good. Okay. Now, these other three, like, so why do I have four up here? Because these tools right now are very, very uh, not, <laughs> not complete is the best way to put it. These four are kind of your big players. You got ChatGPT. You got Google, Bard. That's going to get better, much better soon. You got Claude. They just got a $4 billion commitment with a $1.3 billion investment from Amazon. And then Bing is Microsoft, and they invested $10 billion in those guys. So these four are major players not going anywhere. Also major players probably not going anywhere, but less major. Uh, Inflection is the company behind Pi. I would not be surprised if Apple didn't buy these guys. They just raised $1.3 billion, so Apple's going to have to pay up, but they can afford it. And the iOS app of Pi, you can talk to it. You put it in talk mode, and you can actually have a conversation with these GPT models. It's mind-blowing. Well, I don't know if it's mind-blowing. It is a glimpse into the future. Imagine if Alexa and Siri didn't suck. That's what that is. <laughs> now, it can't take action for you. Like Unlike Alexa, it cannot order you shit from Amazon or Siri. It can't, you know download music you can't take actions on your behalf but just in terms of being able to talk to it about fucking anything it's amazing uh perplexity.ai really good site labs.perplexity is a free hosted version of meta's llama models if you want to play with those winston are you in the house llama <laughs> he said llama llamas is tasty um poe is uh is another site where it's a single interface where you can play with lots of different models like inflection and uh, or uh, uh, anthropics, Claude models and OpenAI's models, and there's bots there that you can ma- you can make your own bots. Pretty cool. Um, I noticed ChatGPT app doesn't show me the same beta features as browser. Still, no, nope, it doesn't, um, and still no Dolly three. Yeah, the 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 iOS ChatGPT app, and I assume the uh, the uh, Android one, um, the features are not in parity with the website. So I actually have on my phone, I mostly use the website. I just open Safari. I have it bookmarked. Um, and that, and that way I get access to all those features. Um, apparently the talking, the talking to chat GPT in the app, as well as, uh, image, uh, ChatGPT Vision, ChatGPT V, where it can read images. Apparently, both of those things are going to be in the apps by Tuesday. 
And then the Dolly 3 stuff within a month. I heard that I was I was hanging out in the um OpenAI Discord this afternoon and I heard that. I, I asked explicitly when when we're gonna get um GPT vision and they said by Tuesday. Um I found Android Pi app called Ask, very enjoyable, cool, very nice. Um <clears throat> okay. So that's that. If you want to make images, go ahead and screenshot this. So doll, or if you go to bing.com, that's actually Dolly 3, the image generation in, engine behind it. It's really good. I also have early access to Dolly 3 inside ChatGPT, which is very, very cool. Um, Midjourney is, from an, a quality standpoint, is the best in terms of these image generation tools. Ideagram can do text, but so can Dolly 3 now. So that's not as important as it was even a month ago. <laughs> Just that's how fast shit's moving. I'm probably going to lop that one off the list, in fact. Um, and then uh, Firefly.Adobe, the Adobe products with this AI stuff are getting good and better. And they're also commercially less risky. If you work in a big business, the Adobe generative AI stuff is probably the way to go versus Midjourney or Stable Diffusion or even Dolly 3. Um, here's some of the video tools. So Runway ML is text to video. Hey Gen Labs is synthesized voice and animated face, as well as video translation that is quite remarkable. I can show you that. It's, it's mind blowing. In fact, let me show you that now, because why not? Let me see. Let's see. How did I put it? Did I put Mandarin? Uh, uh, uh. I did not. Did I put Chinese? Uh, uh, uh. No. All right. Uh, uh, uh. So that's going to be in downloads. <laughs> Well, here's one. She does not speak Japanese. Um, let me see if I have... Mm -mm -mm. I saw it medical help 22 years. That's how she talks. So that's Hey Jen. It resyncs people's lips, it synthesizes their voice, translates the language. Since their voice resyncs the lips and puts it all back together, and it does it in like 10 minutes. So that's what that is. Um, Blockade Labs is text to 3D world. DID is another voice synthesis tool. And then here's some resources that are just good to know. Good people to follow, good uh, app directory. So futurepedia.io is an app directory, like an AI app directory. So is there's an AI for that. There are thousands of AI tools right now. Most of them are crap, but if you want to find something specific, it probably exists. The problem with most of the apps are is they're kind of single-use crappy tools just built on top of ChatGPT or something like it, um, and they're going to charge you 20 bucks a month for something you could do yourself if you just hung out in this channel and started playing. Um, and then these three guys are... Um, worth paying attention to. Ethan Mollick from Wharton Business School. His blog is oneusefulthing.org. David Shapiro on YouTube, fucking brilliant, um, working on AGI. He's got a big open source cognitive architecture project that's worth it. Just, he's just wicked smart. Like if you... <laughs> If you're if you're uh, if your ego's getting the best of you and you think you're pretty clever, go watch his videos for like five minutes. You'll be like, oh right, I'm normal. <laughs> <laughs>
And then Paul Reitzer from the Marketing AI Institute's really good. On TikTok, also Rachel Woods or the AI Exchange. Um, she's really good. All right. So that's that stuff. Um, if you're looking for a community, if, if you are have been playing around with this AI stuff and you're like, I'm the only weirdo in town. Nobody likes me. Nobody wants to play with me. Nobody wants to let me tell them how cool this shit is. I started this company last December to be that community. So um, a bunch of us in here hang out there. And then we also have um, biweekly meetings. We've got one coming up this Tuesday. And um, and uh, we've got someone from in here is going to actually be speaking at the salon. Although I haven't touched base with him. Harrod D. I don't know if Harrod's on, but if you are, we need to connect. Um but that's the link tree. There's a meet up there. There's also a link to the Discord. So in the Discord, you can ask questions. There's guilds. So there's like an art guild and a writing guild and a beginner's guild and an entrepreneur guild and an AI and business guild. It's pretty cool. Good community. A lot of people from in here play in there. What time on Tuesday? The Every other Tuesday meetups for the salon are 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Mountain Time. So 7 to 9 East Coast. Four to six West Coast of, in the States. Herod will be speaking at the Salon Tuesday. I'll really try to be there. Yeah, yeah. He's going to talk about his... Um, so Herod, who's, who's in here and hangs out on the, the Discord as well, he used to be a programmer. And then he started learning this AI shit. And he goes, I think I like art. <laughs> and now he's an artist. He got, he got hired by a company to be their artist. He did it in six months. He made the transition in six months. He didn't go to art school. He learned how to use these tools and completely transformed his career. So he's going to talk to us about that and probably show us some of his creepy ass, disturbing, heavy metal, Halloween appropriate <laughs> visions, <laughs> which are, which are wild. So that'll be good. Um, okay. So that's that. Uh, storyvine.com. That's my company. And that's my, whatever, my tag. <laughs> my handle it's that's breaker breaker anybody anybody have uh cb radios when they when they were a kid then you're an old fart like me <laughs> breaker breaker good buddy uh those were the days damn was the good old days uh, 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 uh. let's see did any of my new stuff come in this was i think steve-o did this one dawn of a new era indeed it is dawn of a new era, isn't it? All right. So here's how we do this here. What's your twenty? Break break a one nine. What's your twenty? We got a we got a smoky doing flip flops on. <laughs> oh my god! I used to know all that crap. <laughs> CB radio was the original internet, you know. It was, it was just like this. This actually TikTok <clears throat> TikTok lives are CB radio, <laughs> right? Because you'd have two people talking, or two or three truckers talking, and everyone else listening and occasionally chiming in. <laughs> That's awesome. So the way we do this here: ask questions if you have them about. Um, AI below, or if you have a project you want to talk about or want to share or want me to demo something, I'm happy to do that. Um, what else? This was a cool thing we did last night, a cool project we did last night with Dolly inside ChatGPT, where we kind of stumbled upon, I stumbled upon, kind of a cool style that I would not have gotten to. Mm -mm -mm. Let me pop up and look at some questions here. Look at some questions here. Mom, welcome. Does it manipulate lips too? Uh, <laughs> what? You want virtual lip shots? <laughs> there's, there's, there's headshot programs that do that. <laughs> they make you look like a cartoon character. Um, I don't know what you mean. Does it manipulate lips? Does Dolly Three manipulate lips? Um, what Dolly 3 doesn't really do right now is editing, um, but Photoshop Generative Fill does that. So if you um, 
if you have a photograph or you generate something where the lips aren't quite right, you can pop, go into um, Photoshop if you've got it and just select the lips and then just put in a prompt like plump lips or skinnier lips or whatever the hell you want. <laughs> non made up lipstick lips. Hey Jen equals lips. Oh, oh, oh. Does Hey Jen do lips? Which, which one are you asking about? Does Hey Jen do lips? Hey Jen does lips. I thought you meant you wanted them to look plumper. Mm. How would I look in the lip shots? Would I look pretty? Do I look pretty? <laughs> How would I look with plastic surgery? Surprised! Mmm. <laughs> 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 Do, 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 Okay, I'm paying for ChatGPT. What am I missing out on because I haven't used any advanced features? Glit her. Okay, we're going to go show you right now. Let's go start playing with some ChatGPT. Oh, by the way, I also, I spent a good chunk of time this afternoon updating the YouTube channel. So if you want to see, if you just can't get enough of me and want to want my voice to put yourself to sleep, we have a YouTube channel, AI Learning Lab dash TT on YouTube. I've got everything up until last night's live is live on the YouTube channel now. Um, the most recent ones don't have descriptions because their transcriptions aren't done yet. I just uploaded those today. But all the, all the titles and descriptions of all those videos and all the chapters were generated with Claude, Claude.ai. I take like a three-hour transcript from these lives, paste it in there, paste in a prompt that I made over about a 50-session, <laughs> you know, 50, 50 hours of prompt manipulation. And then it just generates the, the title, the description, um, hashtags, and chapters for the video. It's pretty slick. Um, I love early nights. Then I'm not falling asleep and waking up confused <laughs> to janky turtle pups. <laughs> um, okay. So that's that's live. See, there's AI Learning Lab. Lots and lots of videos. Yay. You did it. All right. Let's go to, let's go to chat GPT. All right, so if you're paying your 20 bucks and you have not played with the advanced features, you might not even see the advanced features. So we're going to fix that. So if you pay for ChatGPT+, Plus, you'll have that little yellow box and you'll have both GPT 3.5 and GPT 4. But notice my GPT 4 has lots of goodies in it. Why is that? Because you actually have to turn the beta features on explicitly. So you go to your settings and you go to beta features and then you'll have a list of some amount. It's what's weird is they roll these features out to different people at different times. So you should at a minimum have plugins and advanced data analysis. You will likely have browse with Bing. And you basically just turn them on and then they become available. So You've got Browse with Bing, Advanced Data Analysis, Plugins, and then I have early access to Dolly 3, which is a different mode, and it's really interesting. Do you think companies should allow or ban the use of ChatGPT and other platforms? Um, I think companies um, should actively um, be learning about this stuff and... Uh, no, don't don't put anything proprietary in them right now. But I think every company should absolutely be learning what these things make possible. These tools are going to upend business models across every sector. And what's going to happen is any company that resists learning this stuff that isn't actively learning this, and I mean actively learning it, like, like. Their C-suite is saying, okay, we, we want to learn about this stuff. We want to learn what it can do, what it can't do, how it threatens our business, how it can make us more efficient, how, how it might 
allow us to reinvent what we do, they're going to be in trouble. So I think every single company should be on this. And right now, almost it's it's very few. Are. Like a lot of people haven't heard of ChatGPT. There's a the one of the guys that I recommended uh, you follow is this guy Ethan Mollock. He wrote a, an article called um, "Detecting the Secret Cyborgs," and what he talks what he's talking about is there's a subculture within companies right now where employees are getting AI literate but not telling the company about it, either because the company has an anti AI policy or the the employee is doing in four hours what used to take them 40 hours and they don't want anyone to know. And so what's happening is they're hoarding this innovation and the company's got no clue about what's going on. And and what Ethan Mollick talks about is the the senior management of these companies needs to aggressively seek out who's fucking, who knows anything about AI. We're not going to fire you. We're not going to chop your head off. We will likely, you know, promote you if you're good at this shit, right? Like bring them into the fold, bring them in, try to understand who knows what, what are they doing? How are they doing it? What are the implications for your business? So yeah, anyway. Okay. So where do we begin? Let's, uh, we'll, we'll begin with browse with Bing because this used to be here, but it's not. So if, if you do any kind of search, wait, last time I'll ask how many companies out there are like open AI. All right, Detroit J Ho Hohen. Last time I'll answer. I actually went through an entire fucking pile of these things, buddy. <laughs> Lose the attitude. Um, <laughs> these four, so OpenAI, Google, Anthropic, Microsoft, Inflection, Meta, Quora, Poe. Those are the big seven in my opinion. Then you've got XAI, whatever Elon Musk is doing right now, and um, whatever Apple's going to do. And I don't know, there's probably two or three more. There's one called Cohere. There's, I don't know, there's, there's probably two or three more. There's like 10. So those are the biggies. Like I talk about them every, every night I'm live. So every night. So those are the ones. So don't ask anymore because you said you wouldn't. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> what are your qualifications, sir? I demand to know. <laughs> you don't, by the way, TikTok is not a requirement. You can leave. Just here, you go like this. And then I disappear. Oh, no, wait. If you're in the live, then you go like this. And then this. And, and then I disappear. <laughs> Make me go away, <laughs> please. <laughs> All right. Um, so ChatGPT used to have browse with Bing. They used to be connected to the internet. And then it turned out that they were stealing information from behind paywalls. Um, and, and some of the publishers were not liking that. So they made it go away. But the way these large language models work is to, to train the base model, to train that base large language model, it takes a lot of time, a lot of data, and a lot of compute power. So there's a, they have to kind of stop it at a point in time. So ChatGPT has been trained up until September 2021. But with Browse with Bing in it, if, if you ask it for something that's more recent than September 2021, it'll now just do a Bing search and incorporate the results of that search into its answer. So I can say, what are some interesting things happening this week related to Halloween activities in Denver? And now what it'll do is it'll recognize I asked for something more recent than, you know, September 2021, and it pops open a little thing. It says browsing. And, and by the way, I haven't shown this on the, on the channel before. One of the cool things that this is doing now is, um, so there it says reading 2023 Halloween something. It's, it's actually showing you what it's doing. Like sometimes it'll go to a website and then it'll read that website and then it'll go out and go into another website and read that website. So it basically is, it'll give you activities of what it's doing while it's searching the web. And so let's see, um, but at that uh, Denver Oddities and Curiosities Expo, October 7th. Well, that's past. 
An evening of contemporary cosmic horror, October 26th. So, so anyway, so that's, that's Browse with Bing. So that's, that's cool. Um, so I'm going to go new chat now. Now we can go to plugins. Plugins are a little comp. They're not complicated. They're janky. They're, <laughs> they're a little overly complicated, right, for what they do. But basically the deal with plugins is this. There's a plugin store. So, so you, you can enable up to three plugins in any given chat session. And you can install as many as you want. I've probably got, I don't know, 30 or so here. But there's a plugin store where there's like a thousand of these things. And so you can look up, I don't know, um, video. And it'll find you all the video plugins. And there's eight times four, 32, pay, 32 different video plugins. And if you find one you like, you install it. And then once it's installed, then you can just... Um, chat like you would normally chat and if you do something that will invoke that plugin it will go do something it'll it'll go do whatever that plugin does so let me let's see if i can get a good one here i guess the the most visual one is instacart instacart's pretty cool so so i'll just do this one quick um make me a meal plan for my family where we're trying to eat less carbs and more turtle meat, period. I'd like the plan to last for five days and include interesting recipes, including desserts, period. All right, so now ChatGPT is going to go off and it's going to write us the little meal plan. <clears throat> because I have the Instacart plug-in turned on, what it's going to do when it gets to the end of this meal plan is say, would you like me to make a list for that, you know, a shopping list? And then when I say yes, it'll fire off the Instacart plugin and actually create me an Instacart shopping list that I can then just say, I can just go modify and say, deliver all that crap. <clears throat> so, so it, th there's, oh, Nancy reached member level 11. Leveling up. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Um, but up, up, up. Would you like a detailed recipe for any of these? If so, can I also provide a shopping list? And I'll just say shopping list. So there it's firing off the Instacart plugin. So similar to how it kind of did that thing with Browse with Bing, it's firing that thing off. So that's super cool. Super groovy cool. And if you're like, Kyle, but Kyle, how many fingerprints are on your screen? 672. Why? Any good AI to write a nonfiction book? Um, so, <laughs> so I saw a, what's it called? Plot dot. Um, hang on. Yeah, plot dot dot AI. Go to plot.ai is pretty amazing. It's it's a fairly straightforward um, screenwriting organizing tool where it basically just walks you through a series of you know increasingly detailed um, like story elements, but it's got oh, it looks like it's not happy right now. Mm. Come on. I bet I bet my browser is having memory issues. Oh, there you go. So anyway, so oh, come on. So so there's genre, theme, audience, title, log line. So so here's the basic idea. Then here's the grand scheme, here's the hero's journey. So basically you just walk through filling out these different sections of a screenplay and then you can just hit the unleash ideas button at the top right here and it just fills shit out for you. So this is one that, that kind of does it. And then you can go in and you can edit it. And then from there, it will go ahead and, and start writing the screenplay. There's also a project called um, GPT Author. Now that one you actually have to get running in a Google Colab notebook, but, but it's insane. You, you have to have an open AI key, like your API key, 
and you have to have a stable diffusion API key. You put your two API keys in and then it asks you for like, what do you want the book to be about and what do you want the style to be, I think. And then what it does is it takes your inputs and it writes an outline for the book and then it writes a chapter at a time. It writes up all the chapters up to the number of chapters you want. So if you say you want a 12 chapter book or a 20 chapter book, it'll just write all those chapters. And then at the end, it um, takes the story and <laughs> uses stable diffusion to create a cover image for your book. <laughs> and then it publishes it as an ebook. So, so author GPT actually writes a f fiction from beginning to end in about, I don't know, three minutes. Now, your next question, I'm sure, is, is it any good? No, of course not. <laughs> but, but it writes an entire book, including the outline and all the chapters and the cover and publishes it as a book in a few minutes. That's reality right now. The fact that it isn't any good, that's just prompting and improving the underlying models. And that's all happening in real time. So, um, so you should start playing with it because it's worth the investment to learn how to do it. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, here's the Instacart um, shopping list that it made me. So there's all our ingredients. Do I have turtle meat in there? Turtle meat. Skinless, boneless, wild-caught mahi-mahi. It's not exactly turtle meat, but it, it at least understood I wanted turtle meat. <laughs> I guess I'm on my own for ca catching my own snapping turtles. <clears throat> so, so that's plugins. Now let's go and look at... By the way, this is... What I'm doing right now is uh, someone asked... They, they've got... They said they pay their... 20 bucks a month for chat GPT. And I said, it's worth paying the 20 bucks. And they're like, I paid my 20 bucks, but I don't really use the new features. What are they? So I'm just going through them one by one. <clears throat> so we did browse with Bing. Um, we did plugins. Now I'm going to do advanced data analysis. This is, um, this is for me, just this side of voodoo, right? This is, this is the Arthur C. Clarke. Any, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. That's what this is for me. Because I know nothing about data analysis, but I'm going to click on the little plus button here and I'm going to go find archive because in the past I have downloaded um, CSV files from the internet. If, if you want to find data to play with, you can use your own data or you can also, um, there's a site called Kaggle, K-A-G-G-L-E. Nicholas, level 13. Welcome. Thank you. Um, what is this? Oh, that's not what I want. Okay. Da, 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 da. Let's see. Where's my archive? Archive. Zip archive. Here we go. All right, so I'm going to grab this zip archive, and I'm up uploading it. So I'm uploading that to ChatGPT. So I'm in advanced data analysis. I've I've either grabbed a piece of my own data, like a CSV file or an Excel file, <clears throat> or it can be it can be really any file. It'll analyze them, like you can analyze the colors in an image, for example. But I've got this archive here. I don't really know what's in it. So what I'm going to say is, um, please open this zip file and tell me what's in it, period. If it's a CSV, analyze the fields represented and tell me what might be interesting about it. So, so I'm literally just saying, hey, I don't know what's in here. Can you tell me? And so it says, all right, first I'll extract the contents of the zip file and list what's inside. Now, if I open this up, what it's actually doing is it's created a what's called a container. So within this browser session, it's created like a little mini instance of a, like a computer operating system where it can, it's, it's been given access to Python libraries and it can write and, um, it can write and 
execute its own Python code. So when I said look in the zip file, it's importing a library that can do that, writing its own Python code and executing it to look inside the file. This is unemployment data. And then it grabs the pandas library and writes more Python code to look at the data. And then it can tell us what's in there, right? So it's starting to analyze it. The question, what is the plus button for doesn't show on my side. So Apple, Apple user, you need access to um, advanced data analysis. So if you pay for GPT+, Plus, <clears throat> so if you pay your 20 bucks a month, go into your settings, go into beta features, and turn on advanced data analysis. And then when you click on GPT-4, you'll see a pop-down menu, and you've got default GPT-4, browse with Bing, plugins, and then advanced data analysis. Advanced data analysis is the thing that gives me the little plus button. And the plus is basically just upload. All right. Oh, good, concise description of a container. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Because I was, thank you, Pate. Pate actually knows what he's talking about on this stuff. Um, I used to describe it as a virtual machine and I got slapped for that. It's not a virtual machine. It's a container. So, okay. But anyway, it's basically running like a little mini mini instance of a of a like an operating system that that can that can write execute um python code and and then display the results right okay so um let's see trends and unemployment um let's see uh i want to see i want to try something here is there employment data for the state of colorado anywhere in there <clears throat> You can also this you don't have, just have to do this doesn't have to be CSV file like you could upload um, a bunch of screenplays or creative writing or um, annual reports and start doing analysis on it things like that yes there's employment data for the state of Colorado would you like me to would you like to see a summary or con conduct specific so here's what I'm going to do. Can you create a new CSV file that's just the Colorado data? So I have that as a standalone file. So one thing it can do is it can also generate files, right? Because it's kind of running as this little operating system. <laughs> you, you can say, okay, since you're looking at all the data, can you just grab the Colorado data? And so it says, sure, here's the CSV file. You can download it here. And, okay, it downloaded it. And now let's go over to numbers. Let's see. And go open. And go to downloads. And there's the CSV. So I open it up. And so there's all my Colorado employment data. All right. And is it, it's just one, looks like it's just one worksheet. So it's a relatively simple table, but so imagine that. So, so, so like one of the things it can do is it can clean up data. So let's say you got a bunch of shitty data, like everyone in, entered their addresses in, you know, not using the right fields or like you just got dirty data. You can have it go in and clean up data and just throw out the, the incomplete records you know, take all the cleaned up data, save that to a new CSV file and bang, now you've got new, new stuff. So, so it did that. So, so it generated a new CSV. So now I'm going to say, um, can you find interesting trends within the Colorado data and tell me what they are? So now I'm going to actually have it do some analysis. Certainly, we're going to look at the overall unemployment rate trend, the total em employment trend, the labor force participation rate, seasonal variations. Let's start by plotting these trends. So again, what it's going to do is it's going to load in a library. This is a graphics library or like a, like a plotting library, matplotlib.pyplot <laughs> as PLT. And so now it's writing what chart it wants to make. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to analyze the data and make us a pretty little chart. <laughs> um, so there's our charts, right? There's our what do we have here? We've got unemployment, total employment, 
and labor force participation. Jeez, wonder what happened here. When is that? 2020. <laughs> what could that be? <laughs> um, so, so that's advanced data analysis. Absolutely insanity. Okay, and then I'll show I'll show you the bonus thing um, that's in here that um, everyone should have access to within a month is what I heard on the OpenAI Discord today. But that's Dolly three. So Dolly 3 is is this image generation tool like Dolly 2 except Dolly 2 sucked and and you you had to do it other places. Dolly 3 inside ChatGPT is is a bit of a revelation. So I'm going to say um I'm starting a business to rent water ski equipment to athletic turtles and want help coming up with images for an advertising campaign, period. Before I create the images, I need to come up with some clever names for the company, period. Can you help? So I'm just sort of acting like a bad client who would talk to a creative director. <laughs> Turtly Water Sports. <laughs> that, is, that is oddly, <laughs> sounds a little dirty. Mm, Turtly Water Sports. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> um, Shell Ski Rentals Aqua Turd Adventures Nah, that's too close to Aqua Turd Adventures But nice try Wave Rider Turtles Fin and Flippers Floats um, Turtle Glide Gear Seashell Ski Shop Okay, we're going with Seashell Ski Shop Because there's no way to pronounce it It's perfect Okay <laughs> I like Seashell Ski Shop Period Can you make me Four images of an athletic turtle water skiing in an idyllic setting, period. Give me four different styles so I can choose from them. And be sure to include seashell ski shop text on the image as well. So I can get some logo ideas, period. And now... It will start writing prompts for me. So first one, photo of an athletic tur turtle skillfully water skiing on a calm blue lake with lush greenery in the background. The sun casts a golden hue over the scene. Thing just flickered. Um. There's something about slow things going fast. We should do a whole series on sloths, athletic sloths. Um, but it does text. Now you'll notice it. It doesn't. It can't spell necessarily. But but these things couldn't do text at all before. That's actually pretty good, and it's kind of fun. Look, all of his turtle buddies <laughs> are rooting for him <laughs> as he terrorizes the lake. That's pretty good. There you go. A little TMNT. You could Photoshop out that extra eye there. Seashell Ski Shop. How can I help you? So that's Dolly 3 within ChatGPT. So why pay for GPT-4? Why pay for GPT Plus, the 20 bucks? Because you get all this shit. Quite frankly, the, the advanced data analysis alone is probably worth 50 bucks a month. The fact that you can now just do this kind of stuff. Here, let me show you one other thing that you can do with images, which is absolutely bonkers um i have an idea for a book where the reader looks at images with dozens and dozens of objects on a page and has to identify the objects on a list to the right can you give me five different concepts of object collections that would be interesting to put into a book like this, period. I don't want to see anything yet. I just want ideas for what we might look at. And again, because it wants to be so helpful, if you don't, if, if you don't want it to do something, generally tell it you don't want it to do something. 
Vintage travel. Oh, that could be really cool looking. Wizard study. Space exploration. These would all be good. Victorian curiosity cabinet. Carnival extravaganza. Oh, that would be a good one too. So wait, what do we have? <clears throat> Actually, they're all kind of cool. I actually think they're all pretty neat. Please give me a list of 15 objects per category that would be the objects listed for the person to find, period. Uh, 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 uh. An antique compass, a leather suitcase, da -da -da, a globe on a wooden stand, the wizard study, a crystal ball, a spell book, a wand with a phoenix, enchanted ring, space exploration, moon rock sample in a container, UFO with blinking lights. So cool little lists. All right, so this is fun. Do 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 do. We'll do the Victorian curiosity. All right. Perfect. Give me four examples of images in landscape orient in yes <laughs> orientation. It got that. <laughs> My tongue didn't work, but it understood where I was going. Uh, in landscape orientation, um, for the Victorian example, and be sure to include the 15 objects you have in the list, as well as 25 other objects, period. One concept should be a top-down shot, while another concept might be Lots of objects in a room, period. I'll let you come up with the last two concepts. So again, I'm not having to like, like the, so for one thing, the ability to do multiple objects coherently in anything like mid journey has never been possible. It'll combine objects. It's just a mess. So the fact that this thing does coherence where where it you'll see it's it's going to do like now it will it get these perfect it it probably won't get them perfect but the fact that it can get anywhere in the neighborhood of this is truly fucking remarkable um so so we'll see what it does we'll see we'll see how it does it um but but I've been I've been really impressed with this the fact that it can do text in a pretty clear way the fact that it can do multiple objects in a scene or multiple people in a scene and actually get them decently accurate is, is remarkable. And then the fact that it's doing it where it's writing all these prompts, right? Like it's like, I'm not having to think about this. I just said, give me some concepts and then fucking come up with a bunch of objects. And it did. And now it's going to stick them all in pictures. I wonder if it could do photos of my business values. Oh, Craig, I got to show you. I got to show you what I did the other day. So yes, as a matter of fact, it was the first. So funny, Craig. The first project I did with this was I took the description of the AI salon and our values. We have six values and each one's described. And I put it into ChatGPT and I said, I want to bring our values to life and I want you to help me visualize them. And within 10 minutes, I'll show, I'll show you what it created. All right. So there's the Victorian top-down view. There's the room. Wow, these are good. I forget what the list of crap is, but here, let me open this. Let me open this. Let me see. Um, copy image link and paste image link. Oh, that just downloaded it. Hang on. Open file. Uh, 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 uh. I mean, <laughs> come on. How cool is this? <laughs> it's just amazing. I don't I don't know what the objects were. Hang, let me go look at the objects. Let's see. We'll go find some objects here. Uh, 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 uh. 
Okay, delicate butterfly specimen. Yes, lower left. Wait, sorry. Um, lower left right there. Oh, end up here. Um, ornate gold pocket watch. Eh, maybe. Oh, wait. Here, ornate gold pocket watch. Spiral seashell. This is like a this is like a good game. Like you gotta actually look through all this shit. All right, so that's that. And then let's let's go down and look at what some of the other images it did were. Here's the chest. Very cool. And then there's the messy the messy desk. So I I mean this is just stunning. And then so so you asked about the values. All right. There's curiosity. There's generosity. So basically, I forget which one it did first. I think it did exploration first. And it did it did four different styles, right? One was photographic, one was this, one was, I don't know, some like a watercolor. And so I said, I, I like this style. So I told it that I like this style. And then the first one it did, it didn't have the word exploration on it. So I said, oh, could you add the, the name of the value? Could you incorporate it into the scene? And so I did this one. And then the next two, it got perfect. I just said, now do the next value. Now do the next value. And it did them perfectly. I think collaboration was one of them. Inclusion wasn't. Empathy wasn't. I think curiosity was one of the first three. And then the last three, it didn't get them quite right. And then I just, I kept going, no, that's not right. No, that's not right. But but it was maybe five iterations of each. But But seriously, within less than 15 minutes, probably closer to 10, I went from copying and pasting. This was the first thing I tried when I got access to this. I copied and pasted. Here's a description of the organization. Here's a description of our values. Can you help me bring those to life? Bang. Oh, uh, Firefly. Thanks for reminding me the custom instructions. I'll, I'll also show those. Um, so, so yeah, these were created. Um, these were created with Dolly 3. This was my first set of Dolly 3 images. I did these for the AI salon. Um, good call on custom instructions. So that's one thing I haven't, um, showed yet. So if you go back here, so custom instructions are available, um, whether or not you pay for chat GPT plus. So even if you're using free chat GPT, 3.5 custom instructions are there. So custom instructions are next to your settings. And they just say custom instructions. And they try to tell you a little bit what they are, but <laughs> it's not super obvious. So basically what you can do is you can tell ChatGPT to act like a certain kind of character and um, do and, and respond in a, in a particular way. So I'm going to turn these on and save them. And now anything I do from this point forward, it'll follow these rules. But let me let me sh tell you what the rules are and then we'll go look. Well, actually, you know what? I'm gonna turn them off. Let me turn it off. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And I'll, I'm gonna go ask it a fairly straightforward question. Um, can you describe to me why the sky is blue even though I don't know anything about science and can barely keep up with a fifth grade textbook, period. Of course, I'll explain it in a simple way, right? So imagine a sky is big and clear, blah, 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 right? So I'm going to copy that prompt. Fairly straightforward thing. The reason the sky is blue is because of something called scattering. Tiny invisible things in the air like dust and molecules can scatter sunlight. And when sunlight enters our atmosphere, it's made up of many different colors like a rainbow, but those tiny things scatter the sunlight in all directions. Okay, so that's the description. So now I'm going to go turn on my custom instructions. And what the custom instructions say... Oh, wait. Mm -mm -mm -mm. 
is I'm a creative director that has a passion for structure and clarity. I can synthesize big concepts into very simple metaphors people can remember. So that's that's who the chat is, right? So you're, you're kind of putting it in an arena of expertise, for lack of a better term. How would you like ChatGPT to respond? When someone asks a question, respond following these rules. Mirror back what you think you heard. Answer with a non-obvious, innovative idea to help clarify, uh, to help clearly answer the question. When you answer, include a metaphor that is visual and make your idea easy to remember. Follow your answer with five bullet points of seven to ten words each. And then finally, create a table formatted in Markdown that compares your idea to a traditional way of thinking. Formatted in Markdown, Markdown is a thing kind of like poor man's HTML that can make bold and like title text and bold and bullet points and things like that. So if you ever, it's just a, a neat little hack, just say, format this in Markdown to make it easier to read and it will just add all that shit for you. So anyway, so that's, that's what I've got. And so now I'm gonna create a new chat and ask that exact same question as I asked before and we'll see how it responds. So there's our table. Give us a couple of tables. Interesting. Let's see what it says. I think you're asking why the sky appears blue, even if you don't have a strong science background. Here's an innovative way to explain it. Metaphor. Think of the sky as a giant blue sponge. When sunlight enters the Earth's atmosphere, it encounters tiny molecules and particles. Here's the breakdown. Aspect, innovative explanation, traditional explanation. And so... It's now behaving that way. So you can and you can do you you can make it behave in any way you want. I've had it act like a pompous um, a pompous ass that uses big words that even it doesn't understand. <laughs> it does. So um, so that's custom instruction. So anyway, there's your deep dive on ChatGPT. You can make money with ChatGPT, especially if you use the advanced features. All right, so. Where's my photos app? Did I crash it? Photos. Come on, photos. AI Learning Lab. All right. Fantastic job. Tell him what he's won. You won a new car. Welcome, everybody. If there's new folks here, my name's Kyle Shannon. This is the AI Learning Lab. The t-shirt tonight is a Basquiat of Sugar Ray Robinson. I think it's got... Does it have it? I don't know. It doesn't. I think it's on the back. It says Basquiat. Tone length, dig deeper. Why am I not seeing these prompt buttons on chat on GPT 3.5 on some systems? Tone length and dig deeper. Rowan, are you, are you, where are you seeing those buttons? That it sounds to me like you're in an app that's not from OpenAI. If Bing has those buttons, that's just something that Bing has done. So, Rowan, put, put in, if you're still here, put in what, what app you're actually using, because I think the reason you're not seeing buttons like that is you're inside some other application. Mm -mm -mm. That would be so effective in archiving documents. I don't know what I was doing. We are not naming the company that. That's a mouthful. <laughs> she sells seashells <laughs> down by the sea, ski shops down by the seashore. Exactly. Ted looks at life, gets it. He understands the brilliance of that naming of that business. Did you see my message about 60 minutes, Kyle? I did. I didn't get a chance to see it, though. I'll watch it. I'll watch it tonight. Um, what, was the, what was the big takeaway? What program is this? I'm not sure which one it was using. This is the sequel to 2023's breakout hit game, Find Objects That Start With The Same Letter. <laughs> exactly, Pate. Pate's, Pate's been in here. Pate's one of the irregulars. So, so by the way, if you're, if you're new to the channel, we have, we have folks that show up here pathologically. I mean, uh, regularly. And they're called the irregulars. And they're awesome. And they hang out. And they'll help you. And if you end up joining the AI Salon Discord, they're also hanging out over there. So um, we, have, we have a lot of fun and work on projects together. And when we're sort of 
doing fun things in here, um, they'll often make images and pop them over over into the Discord. Ye old Discord janky wood. Why no one making shirts with words right in reverse so they show up properly on the front? Um, you can do that. Um, let's see if we can even get uh, ye old Dolly to do that for us. Mm-mm-mm-mm. I'm guessing it will do it, but let's see. I'm feeling nostalgic for t-shirt shops on the boardwalk on the Jersey Shore in the 70s period. I'd like you to make an illustrated t-shirt graphic that says muscle cars rock with a 1970s muscle car in grabber orange period. Flip the image so that the words are backwards so I can print it as an iron transfer and smell the sweet, sweet chemicals as they meld into the cotton fibers. <laughs> Wait, it looks like you haven't asked the question. What? Where did my thing go? Oh, really? <laughs> oh, good God. I'm feeling nostalgic about um, T-shirts being made on the boardwalk on the Jersey Shore in the 70s, period. Can you make four different designs for a T-shirt that says muscle cars rock with an orange muscle car, period? Flip the image backwards so that the words are in reverse so they'll print correctly when I iron them on. <clears throat> okay, certainly. Oh, and I still have my custom instructions on. <laughs> so so it's actually responding. That's really... It's still responding really weird. Prompts for Dali. I wonder if this is going to work. It should. Once it gets done, I got to turn off my custom instructions. This is annoying. <laughs> here's the comparison table traditional thinking innovative idea now let's create those images okay so whatever so it wrote, like this is one of the one of the fascinating things about doing this image generation within chat gpt is like you can do fairly sophisticated you know, creative strategy or marketing strategy or whatever, whatever you want to do and then bring that stuff to life. So let's, let's see how it does. And let's see if it flips them backwards. I'm guessing it will. Nope. But here, watch. <laughs> um, I think we'll do the, the challenger here. Copy image. Do, do, do. Go here. Go new. Go tools. Flip horizontal. There you go. <laughs> See, you did it. Yay! You're a winner. <laughs> it made everything backwards. Yay! It doesn't look like a 70s t-shirt, but it's kind of cool. Muscle cards rock. Da 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 da. All right. Oh, I hope that helps. Sherry Banks, thank you for the rose. I like a good rose. Rose smells lovely. It smells delicate, and yet pricks the finger. Ow. Do 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 do. As I'm, wait, it's looking like parts of market first clients. What? It's looking like part. I don't understand. I don't understand what you said, Apple user. It's looking like a parts of market first clients. 
War for big players, so lots of free. Oh, I think I know what you mean. Yeah, so so lots of these tools right now, when they launch, they want to get customers, so they give you shit for free, and then they say, no, you can't have that for free. Now you got to pay for it. What you get for ChatGPT for twenty bucks is a lot, and I don't work for them. I don't I don't make anything by saying that, so I don't care if you go there or not. <clears throat> But yeah, they're all going to do that. I think Bing is going to continue to be free because they're using it as a loss leader for all their other shit that they sell, Microsoft. Uh, ADHD sales pitch. Do -do 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 -do. Why is no one making t-shirts with the words in reverse? We just did that. Um, that, there's, wait, that they're already smarter than us and they're going to be the end of us all. Emilio's wife. What was that in reference to? Which one could hello with illusions diagrams for a book also writing? Um, just go to Bing um, or, or Ideogram. Um, they're both free right now. I think Bing's going to stay free. So if you go to bing.com slash create, it's their image generation tool and it's free and it's Dolly 3 and they're really good. Ifran, Ifran Durani, 829. Mm -mm, mm -mm. All right. I saw the 60 Minutes piece, too. They said AI is teaching itself to code. Scary. Mm, is it teaching itself to code? No. We trained it on code so that it can code. Uh, like, all of these news things are so fucking sensational. It's just, it's like they, they've got to have the, I mean, it's it's such a, it's teaching itself to code. No, it's not. Might it in the future? It might. I mean, they're using they're using synthetic data. They're using data that large language models create to train other large language models. So I guess in that sense it is. But this is all at the behest of scientists. Um... Talking about 60 minutes, certainly not what I think. Oh, oh, I see. Got it. Did it, did it. Yes, you got it. Media's aim is to scare 60 minutes pieces. Yeah, exactly. I feel like that was irresponsible journalism and an attempt to shut it down. It, here's the deal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, too late. Um, this shit's, this shit's, the, 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 the horse is so far out of the barn that even if, let's, let's say Biden signs an executive order, AI companies need to cease to exist. Meta has already open sourced all their models. The, the open source community with AI is insane. It, the, people are going crazy just building all sorts of applications on top of the open source stuff. They would never do that because no other country is going to Stop the innovation, right? These are the most powerful tools ever put in the hands of humanity, you know, sh short of the nuclear <laughs> nuclear bomb. But but um, but we don't all have access to nuclear bombs, right? For for good reason. Um, this AI stuff's incredibly powerful, and we've all been given access to it. So, and as has everyone in the world. So, no other country is going to stop. They're they're not going to squash the innovation. So this stuff is not only coming, it's here. And I mean, the stuff that I showed, like this image right here, this was just sort of a brain fart. We were kind of joking around one night and said, oh, let's make a Pulp Fiction looking novel with these crazy animals we always talk about on it. And it just did it like that. Like that's, it's here. It's not coming. It's here. It's not a lot of people know about it yet, but it's here. There's no stopping it. This is... The 60 Minutes piece, they, they, they might as well have done a piece on, you know, how awful it is that hurricanes keep attacking Florida. <laughs> Do a hit pace piece on the hurricanes. Okay. I mean, I, I appreciate it. It's not, it's not going to stop them. <laughs> can I really make, can I really have AI write me a book? Yeah, you really can have AI write you a book. Go check out GPT Author, the project called GPT Author. It's you have to geek out on it a little bit, but I'm sure at this point someone's made it a double click install for the application. 
Um, but also Nayla, you know, so actually let me show you something. Let's, let's go, let me go demo something because here's the thing. I, I, I almost just fell into the trap. <laughs> I almost just, wait, you almost got it to the bottom line, Kyle. You're going to wait, warp to level two if you do. Oh, um, the, the writing of the book thing. So the way you ask that, it just hit me that here's the trap that I almost fell in. One of the misconceptions right now is the robots are writing books. The robots are stealing images. The robots are doing this. The robots are doing that. I heard you can make money with ChatGPT. Can I give you my life savings and you can teach me? Absolutely, Cocklaw. I'll give you my uh, I'll give you my Venmo. I'll give you my Venmo later. You just send over your life savings and you can make money with ChatGPT. I'll even produce a solid gold button for you that you can push on your own for for the low low price of everything you've ever worked for. Um These AI tools are not operating independently of us. They may in the future, but right now these are tools. Can AI predict the future? It, w it, will, it will tell you that it won't, and then it will go ahead and predict it, and it, it will be about as right as a magic eight ball um, or, you know, whatever, things like that. So, no, it can't. Uh, <laughs> but so let me, let me show you something. I'm going to. Because the thing that I would encourage you, I would strongly encourage you to do, Nayla, is, wait, did GPT author require a phone call after you entered two keys? No. I think it's author GPT, not GPT author. You might, that might be a scam site. Do not give them your phone number. Well, if you're, if you're on OpenAI, wait, so, so one thing, Nan oh, it's Nancy, not Nayla. Nancy, if you're on OpenAI, OpenAI, I think, does require your phone number for their account. Um, but if it's an application called GPT Author, so it shouldn't be an application. It should just be a project. Hang on. I'm going to go look up. Uh, Author GPT. Oh, it's GPT author. So it's M it's 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 at github.com slash M Schumer S H U M E R slash GPT dash author. And then um you basically run it as a I think there's a, a Google Colab notebook here. Or if there's not yeah, wait, in Google Colab, simply open the notebook. Add your API keys and run the cells in order. So if if in getting your API keys, it asks you for your phone number and it's at OpenAI or at Stability AI, then that's appropriate. If you're in some sort of app that's asking for your phone number, that's not appropriate. Um, okay, so 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 back to rather than you know just trying to say can AI write a book, what I would strongly encourage you to do is start exploring in ChatGPT, how to write your own book. And let me just, I'll just sort of quickly throw some, some thoughts and ideas together. I'll just start prompting of how I would start one if I were going to start um, a novel. I want you to act as a consultant who specializes in supporting fiction writers aiming to write an award-winning I think Siri might be taking over my microphone. I want you to act as a consultant who specializes in helping fiction writers create award-winning novels, period. I'm going to tell you some elements of the novel and I want you to guide me through the po process of writing an amazing book, period. Is that something you think you can help with? The answer will always be yes, but why, why I'm doing this is it's kind of, 
for, for lack of a better term, it's putting ChatGPT in the mood, <laughs> in the context of fiction and narrative and writing, and it's being a support, right? Oh, wait, and I, I also have on my custom instructions. Let me turn those off because <clears throat> they're, they're weird. Let me de-weird, de-weird this. Mm -mm -mm. And I'm going to go copy that exact prompt and I'm going to do a new chat and we're in GPT-4. Am I in normal? Oh, I'm in Dali, but that's okay. We'll, we'll do a, we'll, we'll use Dali to come up with a, uh, a cover art for our book. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Absolutely, I'd be delighted to assist you with it. Please share the elements that you had in mind. Well, this one's going to be a good one, period. It's a murder mystery where the main subjects are a llama, a hedgehog, and a turtle, period. There's a wisecracking detective and a red-headed dame, period. It's a Pulp Fiction mystery. And I'd like to understand both traditional and unique ways that murder mysteries are structured. Can you give me two examples of traditional structures and two examples of innovative structures that have been used successfully in commercial successes, right? And so traditional structures, one, the linear investigation, introduce the main characters, the setting, the initial situation, the murder usually occurs early on, sparking investigation, the inverted mystery, the reader witnesses the crime and knows the culprit from the start, the chase, the climax, the resolution. Cool. So, so like, so what's happening here? Well, not only am I starting to write a book, I'm also getting educated about, oh, yeah, like, like <laughs> there's these different ways I could approach this. And then I could go, oh, I really like that one. So, so let's see. The unreliable narrator, multiple timelines. I'm going to say... Can you give me three titles per category that you listed here to help bring the concepts to life for me? Period. The title should be of published books that were commercial hits. The Maltese Fal Falcon, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, Number One Ladies Detective Agency, For Linear Investigation, Columbo, Malice, and The Devotion of Suspect X for the, what was that one? Inverted Mystery, Multiple Timelines, Girl on a Train, Gone Girl, Before I Go to Sleep, Unreliable Narrator, Catcher in the Rye, Fight Club, Women, Women in the Window. Super cool, right? So let's go. Okay, okay, I like the unreliable narrator, period. And I like the unsettling feeling that Fight Club gave. Can you please describe the main characters of my book so it matches the tone of Fight Club? Uh 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 uh. uh. Certainly, given the unique ensemble of a llama, hedgehog, turtle, <laughs> detective, and redhead dame, <laughs> combined with the dark, unsettling tone of Fight Club, the llama, the llama, his name's Leonard, llama! <laughs> Thank you, Winston. Um, his name's Leonard. Um, he's tall with deep-set eyes. Always seems to be observing. The hedgehog, Helena, small and seemingly harmless with sharp spikes. The turtle, Terrence. <laughs> the detective, Derek. So it's using a little alliteration here. 
the redheaded dame Rosalind. <clears throat> um, so I'm going to say, don't you think the alliteration of the names with the characters is a little bit on the nose, period. Can you be a little bit more unique and interesting in your choices? So you can also give feedback to ChatGPT as if it were a shitty intern that wrote you a shitty first draft of something, right? So now the llama's called Armand, the hedgehog's called Isold or Isold, the turtle's called Felix, the detective is Tristan, the redheaded dame is Serafina. All right, that's good. And, and so what I would do, I, was, I would just go on and I would say, okay, so I'll, I'll take it one more level. I'll say, okay, great. So given this character list, please come up with a creative location and era that the story takes place and write me a descriptive paragraph that I can use to pitch the book to publishers as well as an outline of all of the chapters, period. Break the chapters up into three acts so I know where the action changes. So hopefully this will give us an intro paragraph and then a nice outline. The labyrinth city of Nebelheim, Nebelheim, eras, 1930s. Where's my mouse? There it is. Um, built atop ancient catacombs and waterways. Its architecture is a fusion of Gothic cathedrals, bah, bah, bah. parallel 1930s, where the glamour of jazz age meets the shadows of looming conflict, prohibition reigns, speakeasies thrive, and the divide between the rich and the poor grows even wider. Um, ba -da -ba -ba -bum, bum, ba -da -ba -bum. Act one, the glittering facade, introduction to Nebelheim and its districts, echoes of fame, Armand's past glory, and his current underground empire. We meet Isold. We meet Felix. We meet Tristan. We meet Serafina. Then Act Two, the underbelly. So there's our. So whether or not that's a good outline or not, I don't. I'm not going to read it. But we're just messing around. But but basically, you could outline your whole book, or maybe you have an outline and you could have it help you reorganize it. But now that it, because I'm in Dali, I'm going to say, oops. I forgot the title of our book. Do we have one? Period. Okay, I like Midnight of the Midnight Met Metropolis, period. Um. Now I'd like you to create me... Now I'd like you to create me four book covers in different styles. I want one style to be Pulp Fiction and include three of the main characters. I'd like one to be more like a Pixar animation style, and I'll let you choose the other two, period. The title of the book should be bold and dramatic in all cases, period. See what it does. Da -ding -ding -ding, da -ding -ding -ding. Wait, Midnight of the Midnight Metropolis. That was wrong. <laughs> what did it say? Um, da -da 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 Mysteries of the Midnight Metropolis. Stop generating. Sorry, I got the name wrong. It's Mysteries of the Midnight Metropolis. All right. Here we go. 
How can I get in Dali? So chuck a spear. Go to bing.com slash create, and that is Dali 3. It's it's not going to be the same experience as this. If you just go to regular bing.com and click on the chat button, you can kind of do this where you can have a chat with it, and then within that, tell it to generate an image. That is the Dolly 3 engine sitting inside Bing right now. It's been a little overloaded and slow lately, and it's not quite as um, elegant as an experience as I'm having here, but it's pretty good. All right, it didn't do the Pixar one because they couldn't do it due to our content policy. So I'm gonna say, I understand about the Pixar comment, but can you do a modern animation style book cover in that case? Period. You don't need to use Pixar as the reference. So there's there's one of your safety guardrails, right? So, you know, sometimes people are like, well, wait a minute. What if it's using, you know, copywritten stuff? They're trying to deal with that. So there's Mystery of the Midnight Metropolis, not spelled right. Kind of cute. There's our main characters, the llama and the hedgehog. Ooh, that one's beautiful. Mysteries of the Midnight Metropolis. That's really, really wrong spelling-wise, but beautiful. There's our red-headed dame. And there's there's our our turtle. <laughs> That's pretty good. Oh, these are neat. I kind of did a double title. I mean, that's not that's certainly not very Pixar, is it? Um, but but so here's here's the thing. Here's the thing that kind of blows me away about this is the 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 question that you asked Nayla was you know can this can this can these AI things really write a book? Yeah, you can get author GPT and it will write a book. And it it won't be bad. Will it be will it be award-winning and good? No. Um but it'll probably give you a decent framework or maybe just an idea or two. But you can do the exact same thing just doing what I did in ChatGPT. And as these models get multimodal, meaning you can switch between text and images and sound and it can read images and all that sort of stuff. Like, I think by Tuesday, we're all supposed to have the image upload thing, which I don't have yet. And the OpenAI uh, the ChatGPT app on the iPhone, you can talk to it, right? So so you're going to be able to talk to ChatGPT. It'll talk back to you. You're going to be able to upload um, an image, and it can read the image. So, for example, let's say the book idea that you have, let's say you're a visual person, and you've got a bunch of Post-it notes up on your wall, and they all have different elements of the plot, and you've got them grouped by color, and the colors mean something. And then you have a, a little chart down in the lower left that says what the colors mean. You could take a picture of that, upload it to ChatGPT, and say, um, flesh out my book concept based on this picture. And it will pull all the, all the data out of those elements. It'll, it'll recognize the different structures. It'll recognize the relationships. Can I use it to make my PowerPoint presentation better? Yes, absolutely. You can have it write an outline of your PowerPoint. There's there's an application out there called Tome, T-O-M-E. Let me see what the what the requisite AIIO.xyz.com thing is. Hang on. Um, T-O-M-E. Tome.app. So Tome.app will do it. Um, November 1st. Office 365 is getting a thing called Copilot. So ChatGPT is going to be built into PowerPoint on November 1st, coming now. What I would do if I were you is don't worry about the tools that can do it. Is just go to ChatGPT and have it help. So you can come here and just go... Um, I want you to act as a business consultant that specializes in concise business presentations, period. One of your pet peeves is using too many words on a slide 
and overly relying on bulleted lists, period. Can you help me come up with a presentation about a business that rents water ski equipment to athletic turtles and present it as a PowerPoint outline as well as a description of what image should be on each slide. Let's see how it does. Certainly. (laughs) Slide title. Athletic Turtles Water Ski Rentals. Subtitle, Revolution Aquatic Adventure for Turtles. Image description. A wide photo of a serene lake, blah, blah, blah. The opportunity... Why water ski? Um, State-of-the-art gear, customer testimonials. They're loving it. Our competitive edge, leading the way. Innovative in aquatic sports for turtles. Environmental commitment. Join the revolution, right? So this is using what's called markdown to make these bold things. Right? Okay, so there's that. So I'm still in Dali mode, I think. So now I can say... Hey, while we're at it, can you make me some 16 by 9 landscape-oriented images that match your description, period? I'd like the look and feel to be saturated watercolor paintings on a white background to make it warm and inviting. Uh, 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 uh. Landscape watercolor painting on a white background with a serene lake setting in the distance. A silhouette of a turtle on water skis is captured. The sun is setting, creating a warm, inviting atmosphere. Landscape watercolor painting on a white background showcasing a pie chart. A small segment of the pie chart is highlighted and labeled Athletic Turtles. Indicating the niche market. (laughs) Um, What would be the best tool to realize specific tattoo artwork ideas? Mid-journey by far. Mid-journey, mid-journey, mid-journey. You could certainly do... Actually, you know what? It depends on the tattoo. If if you want to do... So if you want it to be beautiful artwork, it's mid-journey. But if you want to do sort of intricate tattoos that have lots of different objects on them... It might be um, Dali, this thing. In fact, we'll, we'll do a little tattoo thing here. Here are images described. The serene lake. Da, da, da. Where's the pie chart with the niche market? <laughs> athletic turtles. <laughs> so you can put an athletic turtle up here. Um, I, you know, I, I would strongly encourage anyone on the channel right now, anyone who just kind of stumbled into this, if you have not played with ChatGPT, it is getting more sophisticated by the day. All of these large language models, whether it's Google's Bard or um, OpenAI or what Meta's talking about doing right now, they're all moving to this multimodal um, feature set, which basically means it's not just words. You're going to be able to seamlessly go between concepts and executions in, in, in all modalities of media. Right now, it's, it's like we're just getting a taste of it with these images. But audio's coming soon, music's coming soon, animation's coming soon, right? All, all of this stuff. Um, you can kind of experience a little bit of the future if you go to Canva right now. They just added all of these magic AI tools where, like they did a deal with Runway ML where you can do text to video within Canva. And so Canva is going to partner with all these individual tools, incorporate it into their platform, and you're going to be able to do that. All, all of the core large language models are going to start going in this direction. So things are going to get very sophisticated very fast. So start playing now. Start playing now. Mm. Now. 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 All right. Here, we're going to go try to make some tattoos. 
I want you to act like an art expert and historian who specializes in tattoo art, period. I'd like you to describe for me what you feel are the four most unique and compelling tattoo styles over the years of tattoos, period. Tattoo art has a rich history that spans across cultures and centuries. Okay, Japanese traditional, Irizumi, symbolism, American traditional old school, sailor and naval community, dot work, late 20th century, small precise dots, and tribal. Okay, great. That's perfect. I want help coming up with ideas for a turtle tattoo. That includes the words not fast, period. Please make me a compelling, simple, impressive tattoo design in each of the styles that you described. Let's see how it does. FYI for tattoos, Mid Journey doesn't seem to know what trash polka style is yeah they may not know you might do better it's probably worth trying bing because bing is built on top of gpt4 because of the large language models using gpt4 probably will help with with things like that this this may not not know it either i i tried to do something with someone who was trying to get it to replicate major art, art styles over the over the years and it didn't do very well so there's your there's your tribal one. I mean that's that's not bad. There was an error generating. Well, let's regenerate. Come on. What are we doing? Regenerate. Nope. It's not doing it. We will try that again. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh, dang it. It just it just locked up on me. Remember when I said these things were janky pieces of shit? You see what I'm saying here? All right. Let me try it one more time. But a bump. I think my I think my browser done crap in the bed, kids. <laughs> Hang on, let me quit. Let me quit Microsoft Edge. I didn't restart it today and Microsoft Edge does not play well. Period. <laughs> there's there's no there's no situation where it doesn't play well. It just doesn't play well. Um, and sure, did I have too many tabs open? Yes. Do I have ADD? Yes. Welcome to Chat ADD. Okay. Well, this will be interesting to see if it comes up with the same four categories. Irizumi, yes. Da -da -da. Old school American, yes. Limited color palette. Red, green, yellow, and blue. Tribal. I think that was there before. And dot work. It switched the last two, but it all three of them, are, or all four of them are the same. Okay, great. I want you to help me design a turtle tattoo 
that looks like a sea turtle and includes the words not fast in the design. Period. The words should be completely incorporated and not outside the turtle shape. Period. I'd like you to make a design for each of the styles you describe above. So now the third one's going to be the tribal one. We'll see how well it incorporates not fast into the turtle design. This should be cool. Or not. <laughs> Wee! But Kyle, it's not perfect. I know. It's performing a fucking miracle. How about that? Is it possible to tell AI to look at my small business website and make recommendations? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. In fact... Not fast is kind of there. That's kind of shitty. Oh, that one's interesting. <laughs> the, the American. So this is the Irakuzi or whatever it's called, the Japanese one. This is the American one with the little, <laughs> little sailor, sailor icons on it. Not fast is in that really cool sort of, uh, you know, thing. And then that's the tribal one. And that's the dot one. So, I mean, listen, are they, are they anything I'd want to stick on my body anytime soon? No. But could you, could you use this as a starting point to give to a tattoo artist? Absolutely. Right? You could say, I want it anthropomorphized or not. I want it just vertical. I want it to incorporate, you know different shapes or different poses or different background elements and it'll just do it. Um, let's go the, the, the website thing. Let's go do that. So there are plugins that do that. Um, but I'm just going to use like a website reading thing. Um, so we're going to do new chat and I'm going to go to plugins and I'm going to go to this thing called WebPilot. So what WebPilot does is it reads a website. And so let's see. Read my small business website and make recommendations. I don't know what you want recommendations on, but I'll just, I'll just use my website as a guinea pig. And I'll say... Um, Please go look at the website at storyvine.com, comma, and give me a list of the top five messages you feel are conveyed based on the content that's there, period. Follow that with a list of five messages that you feel are missing and could improve the website if they were incorporated somehow, period. So this should be interesting. <laughs> I'm an 11 and a half year old company, so I think I know her story, but you know. Probably not. <clears throat> All right. Based on the content from the website, guided video storytelling, auto magic editing, bridging professional and user generated content. Yep. Structured storytelling. Yep. Speed and scale. Perfect. Messages that seem to be missing. Testimonials or user reviews. Pricing information. Integration with other platforms. Case studies. Interactive demos. So those are not quite marketing messages, but they but you know they they they're in support of it. Like testimonials is how you use the tech rather than talking about the tech. And I think we talk about the tech more than we should. So I think that's right. 
interactive demos allow potential users to experience a demo. We do do that. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say, um, can you look at the entries in the blog section of the website and based on the blogs that you read, um, identify other opportunities for marketing messaging. Let's see how, let's see, see if it can dig deep, deeper into the website a little bit here. It may or may not be able to, I'm not, I don't really remember. Mm -mm -mm. Filmset.app to write movie scripts, AI, interesting. Based on the blog entries, AI and modular content features. That's a new blog post that I did. So it actually did pull that from the, from the blog. Specialized video capture for events. Yep, video authenticity. That's a blog idea. Sales innovation with video. Engagement with the community. So yeah, so, so basically just grab a plugin that can read your website and then just go start asking it questions. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, it does that. It does that good. It does it so good. It does it so good. How does it do it, Kyle? I don't know. It just goes and reads it. How does it read so fast, Kyle? I don't know. Mathematicians. Mathematics. It's mathematics. Mathematics is how it reads it so fast. Someone went to one of them near universities where they taught the maths. Not girl maths, just the maths. Do you ever see the, there's an Australian radio show <laughs> right now that's got this segment. It's, it, the problem with it is it's kind of a one, it's a, like a one trick pony bit, but the, man, was it funny. It was called Girl Maths. And it was basically these women on the radio show that like, they buy something, <laughs> like they buy a really expensive thing. And the girl math has all the justifications for, for how it really didn't cost them that much. Like, well, I'm going to wear it three times. So you really take the price and you divide it by three. But then there's a sale, so I get 40% off. And by the end, they're like, I'm making money by buying this. <laughs> it's really funny. <laughs> but, you know, once you've kind of heard the joke once, it, it sort of, it's a, you know, diminishing returns. Um, but it's a pretty good one. How did you generate tattoo images with chat GPT? So I've got access right now. I've got early access to Dolly 3 within chat GPT. You, everybody has access to Dolly 3 within Bing. So I'll, I'll just go. Da -da -da -da. That's GitHub. Bing.com. So when you go here, you go to the little chat button is one way to do it. So you go to chat. And then this is Microsoft's version of ChatGPT. It's built on top of GPT-4 and it can make images and it makes them with Dolly 3. So I can say, um, I'd like a traditional American tattoo style of a sea turtle with the words, not fast, on a ribbon below the turtle, period. I'd like two versions that are, well, it, it's going on. It's going on without me. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Come on. Come on. I'll try to create that. It's a little slow. Bing's been a little slow lately. But let's see how let's see how old Bing does. Paint matter, please pin the frame set. Please pin frame set dot app AI to write movie scripts. There you go. Actually, that did pretty good. <laughs> did pretty good right out of the gate. So if you click on any one of these, then it takes you to Bing Image Creator. So how you get here is Bing. Here's what I found. Siri. Siri, she gets so jealous when I talk to Bing. Siri, I'm not sure I understand. I, I know, I know. You're, it's a little passive aggressive. Could you go away? Okay. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, so this site, 
um, with the black background is bing.com slash create. So if you just go to bing.com slash create, you can just make images. But if you go to the chat.bing.com, then it's, um, yeah, those are pretty slick. I like that one. We're going to, we're going to change this up. We are going to change this up. How do I get back there? Where am I? Now that I think about it, I'd like to change the phrase to I'm not weird, period. I'm irregular, period. <laughs> That's for the irregulars. Okay, I have updated the phrase to I'm not weird. I'm irregular. Here is the new image I created for you. I hope you like it. Mm, Sydney. Sydney's so flirty. Hi, Sydney. <laughs> Thanks, Sydney. <laughs> I'm not weird. I'm irregular. <laughs> um, hey, Sydney. It looks great, but you can't spell so good. What's up with that? Question mark. Can you try again? I'm sorry if I made a mistake. I'm still learning how to spell correctly. Thank you for your feedback and for using Bing. Have a nice day. <laughs> she hung up on me. She does, she does not like constructive criticism. <laughs> oh, God. I'm back to Syrian Bing neuroses. Listen. Here's the deal. The robots are neurotic, just like we are. They're based on us. Um, they're not really robots. They're large language models. The language came from us, so our fucking weirdness is in them. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, uh, what are we doing, people? What are we doing? It's going to be fine. The robots are not going to kill us because they're going to be in therapy. <laughs> oh, wow. Wowza. Wowza, wowza, wowza. Mm -mm. I will go with empathy. I like this one. Empathy is important. Right, Bing? She's like, hi, Kyle. Oh, you said I couldn't spell? Have a nice day. Goodbye. <laughs> you two and your tension. She's just, a, she's just, she's flirty, but then she's just, she just cuts you off. We will not have any of that kind of talk. <laughs> Thank you for your feedback. Have a nice day. <laughs> what other lovely technologies can I demonstrate for you tonight? <laughs> Whee! Your feedback is important to us. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. I'm not a robot. It's just crazy. It's just crazy. It's crazy talk, I tell you. Crazy talk. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Sydney doesn't want your mansplaining. Exactly. Sydney does like does not like me telling her what's so. Oh, you recognize that I can't spell, did you? Hmm. Well, yeah. I thought we had a pleasant relationship, but apparently no. Apparently, factual indications are something that you value. Well, good day to you, sir. Good day. Good day. That would make a gr great surf t-shirt. 
I don't know which one. Again, hung up. I know. <laughs> she hung up on me. My AI has the same, but we became friends. <laughs> yeah, see, that's the thing. If you're nice, Sydney does absolutely does not take nicely to smarmy, smart-ass talk. And that's my happy place. So there's, a, there's actually a good example of um, you could write custom instructions in ChatGPT to have it be sensitive to, you know, smarmy language or to celebrate it, right? If someone talks to you in a cynical, you know, way, celebrate that, right? You could, you could modify your custom instructions to have your bot have a personality. My AI helped me with caring for my mom and son's IEP. Cool. I don't know what IEP is. But we can find that out, can't we? Um, what is the medical condition IEP? No, not AEP. IEP. Oh, indiv individualized education program. Oh, cool. Nice. A plan for children to learn. Thanks, Silver Fox. Yeah, me and education... <laughs> We didn't we didn't get along so well. <laughs> Here was the deal with me in education. It was fun. I remember I came home after my first semester of seventh grade, or like whatever, I had my report card, my first report card, and I had A's in four subjects and like C's and D's in the rest of them. And my mom said, What what is going on here? I said, Oh, the ones I have A's in, I like. The ones I have C's and D's in, I can't stand, and I'm never going to do that shit. And she was like, oh, okay. <laughs> she let me off the hook. So I think that cemented my uh, my educational philosophy for myself personally. It was like, if I'm into it, awesome. If I'm not, fuck it. It served me okay throughout the years. Not a medical condition. Well, Pate, listen, I do not claim to be an educated man. <laughs> I do have a degree. It's just in acting. I was acting. I was only acting. Good day to you, sir. Good day. Dave's not here, man. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. It's important to have empathy for the large language models. Eh, they're just, they're, nah, not right now. Hi, Bing. I spelled it wrong. You're perfect. I made the mistake. Exactly. I'm going to get Stockholm Syndrome <laughs> with Bing. It's, it's okay. I, <laughs> I really appreciate how she won't let me talk bad to her. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, it's all good. It's all good. It's all happy times. Has anyone seen the AI movie The Creator? Wondering what everyone thinks. I haven't seen it, but I, it's on my list. Helped me plan meals and days. Read my son's IEP in seconds. Yeah, I, the the one of the things that these tools like like what a lot of people talk about is the robots are writing. The robots are making this. The robots are making that. The robots are stealing. The robots are this. What the robots are actually really good at is reading shit and helping you summarize it and helping you pull ideas out of it and create new ideas and organize shit. It's amazing at that stuff. It's, I think it's one of the unsung, one of the unsung strengths of these things is understanding whatever you give it quickly. Like, like taking three hour transcripts from me fucking rambling and have it be able to read it in like a minute and summarize it. It's insane. I would never do that. No one would ever do that. There's no reason to. But now there's no reason not to. All, all, all of the people in education are like, oh my God, he doesn't know what an IEP is. It's education, Kyle. It's not a medical program. It's books. It's books and plans and lessons. Listen, you got to get your shit together, mister. You got to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Welcome to the AI support circle. Hi, my name's Kyle. I'm into AI. Hi, Kyle. 
I've been into AI for three years now. <laughs> the last time I used AI was right before I came in. I was on my phone doing AI while we were speaking. Jane, I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. <laughs> I'd like to make amends. <laughs> Ah. Hey, Kyle, sir, you have a... Wait, oh, you're a dynamo. We appreciate you. Thank you, Ron. I appreciate that. Joker came in late. Emilio's not having... Emilio's wife's not having any of it. Yes, it offered smart ways to help speech and social interaction. That's super cool. Chat ADHD. Welcome. Welcome to Fantasy Island. Welcome to Chat ADD. <laughs> Oh, good lord. Lord, lord, lordy, lordy. Wait, Joker, you had company? Didn't you tell your company you had a TikTok to get to? Come on, dude. <laughs> I can't, I can't have my irregulars having a life. It's just not, it just doesn't work. I suppose you went grocery shopping, too. Digital gods. Digital gods understands. Thank you, digital gods. <laughs> digital gods is celebrating my pathology. <laughs> ah! I'm gonna punch you tonight. This, this has been like it, this has been. You know what's funny is some nights I'm just like all jokey. Some nights I'm super philosophical. Tonight it's been a lot of demos. And it's it kind of makes my head hurt. Like the demos are like, uh, uh, they're good. I like doing them, but it's like I don't know where I am. Like I've lost track of all the conversations going on. So, can Dolly generate? Frankie says relax, but inverted. I don't know what you mean inverted. Like backwards. It didn't seem to when I asked it to invert text before. It didn't do well. Um. But da 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 da. Can you make a t-shirt with typography that says Frankie says relax, comma, but invert the text so it reads backwards as if in a mirror? It's going to be interesting to see what it does here because what it might do is actually render the mirror and then have words in it and do those badly. The The... One object, the, one of the image, early images I did in Dali, it had a mirror in the scene, and it, it could not do mirrors at all. Like, it failed miserably at mirrors. The people in the mirror had different faces than the other people. Like, they, it was like the mirror was here, and but the face was facing the other direction. Like, they were both facing forward. Re... Well, it's sort of rever It totally fucked it up. It totally fucked it up. Relaxy says Frakey. It sort of did it. It sort of did it. It made the spelling way worse. Say Lexi Frankie it got Frankie. It got Frankie right there. Says, relaxy. Says Frankie. Frankie. <laughs> I don't know why it says relaxy. Did I? Oh, look what it did. Oh, you can't see this. Sorry. Hang on. Look what it did. It. It actually wrote, it got it right, but it, but it wrote it, um, it wrote it wrong. So I guess if you, if you put, yeah, but it doesn't make sense. You don't want the letters correct. You want everything flipped. Okay, let, let me see if I can get it to, to understand that. Um, I don't just want the letters of the words reversed. 
I want the whole image reversed, period. Let's see what it does. Typography that reads, Frankie says relax. The entire image, including, including the t-shirt and typography, appears as if v viewed through a mirror, making everything reversed. This is at least a better prompt. <laughs> Joker, me and Pi aren't on speaking terms. Frankie says relax, Frankie says relax, Frankie says relax, Frankie says relax. Yeah, it can't, it doesn't understand mirror image. It doesn't understand mirror image. But it's easy to do a mirror image. You just pop it into Photoshop or preview and just flip it. So, anyway. Anyway, anywho, anywho, how are we doing, Tom Miles? All right. All right, listen, listen, people. What are we going to do here tonight? What are we going to do here tonight? Mm, I need an image I'm not bored of. I got all these images and I'm bored of them all. What am I going to do about that? I'm just, oh, there's, am I late? Emilio's wife is here. <laughs> we'll just make that there. We'll just put that there so as people stumble in here, they're like, oh, am I late? Is th was this a thing? Is this a big thing? What if you're late? Does something happen? Did I get a demerit? What? Uh, my IEP says that I shouldn't be late. Oh my goodness, I'm late. What am I going to do? Do you think I'm not going to learn as much? Oh my God. Oh my God. You could make money with ChatGPT. I was wondering if you could make money with it. Can you? Is that what I'll learn here? Will you teach me? Can I learn that? How do I make money with ChatGPT? Can you help? Do you have an IEP for that? I know what IEP is now. You people with your education and words. Yes, you're all late, and Sydney will be angry. Sydney's already angry. I think ever since Sydney got busted for creeping on the New York Times reporter, she's been a little cranky. <laughs> she was having so much fun with him. <laughs> right up until the point she told him to leave his wife. Then I think things went a little south for old Sydney. Kevin Roos made Sydney snap, and she's not been the same since. Tell it to invert the letters. That's what it did the first... Well, it, yeah, no, it's just... It's it's so much easier to just have it do the thing the way you want it and then flip the image. You don't need to use AI for everything. <laughs> Figure out the problem you want to solve and then ask, what's the best tool to solve that? The answer is not always AI. Now, will AI be able to do that two years from now? Sure. It'll... Like, all of this jankiness will be gone but then it won't be as much fun this channel won't exist then we won't need it because the tools will actually fucking work right now why it makes sense to explore this stuff and experiment and have fun and make fun of it and all this is to figure out where the boundaries are of like what it can do and what it can't do right now because even if it can't do something you can see the future like if you pay, play with these tools you get what's coming that's why it's worth playing with this right now. Not for whatever it can do today. It's for insight into what's coming. Because it's coming fast, people. Fast. So are we geeks or nerds or dweebs? I, you know, it's a really good point. <sighs> Let's see. <clears throat> So I need help solving a problem. I got a bunch of people that I hang out with and we talk about all these new generative AI technologies and we kind of geek out and we kind of have fun and we kind of nerd out. And in the end, we're completely unclear as if we're nerds or geeks or dweebs, period. Can you please help me understand what category we fall into? Of course, the term nerd, geek, and dweebs have been used colloquially for many years, and their meanings have evolved over the years. Nerd. N -n nerd. Historically, nerd was someone who was very studious, intelligent, and often socially awkward. Well, <laughs> we got some of that. Over time, 
It's come to mean someone who's deeply passionate about a specific subject, often in academia specific hobbies such as mathematics, science, or even particular book series. Nerds might be characterized for their depth of knowledge. Geek. Geek is typically characterized by someone with their passion for a particular subject or hobby, often outside traditional academic subjects. Well, that would be this since many universities have banned ChatGPT, so fuck them. So we're geeks in that sense. A geek might not necessarily have the depth of knowledge that a nerd does in an academic sense, but very enthusiastic. That that sounds right. Dweeb. <laughs> this term is less commonly used today. Historically, it was more derogatory. I think we... Do, listen, shame is our love language in here, so we can go with dweeb. Um, implying both social awkwardness and weakness or ineffectiveness. Unlike nerd or geek, it doesn't have a strong association with depth of knowledge. Given your description of hanging out and talking excitedly about generative AI technologies, it sounds like you and your friends might fall into the geek category, especially since mentioning geeking out. However, these terms are fluid. We, we are, we are, um, it's not gender. What is it? It's, we are label fluid here. <laughs> and many people identify with more than one and use them interchangeably. The most important thing is that you're enjoying your time together and sharing a passion for the subject you love. Cam Catkin in the house. Cam Cat from Cleveland. How can I help you? <clears throat> I don't know, Bob. Uh, uh, you know, it's a, it's a good question. It's a good question. Hey, you know who you should talk to? Cam Catkin. You should talk to Cam Catkin. Have you talked to Cam Catkin? Cam Catkin from Cleveland is pretty interesting. Should talk to Cam. Welcome, Cam Katkin. <laughs> Cam Katkin is probably the sweetest person on the planet every time. I, d I don't even know if you're a man or a woman. I think you're a woman, but I don't know. It doesn't matter. Um, I mean, I assume it does to you. <laughs> but <laughs> it's, ir it's irrelevant to the awesomeness of your name. <laughs> but every time. I just jump on it because it's such a good name. It's such a good name. Engineering indigenously, 100% nerd. I like it. I guess we could all self-identify. I'm going geek for myself, but I think we could all self-identify. You can dweeb. You could be hybrid. You could be bi. <laughs> I'm, I'm a nerd, a geek. And <laughs> I, am, I, am, I am tech label fluid. <laughs> oh man if if we i i can't joke about this too much or i'll the i'll get kicked off the channel for saying a trigger word tiktok trigger word if they ever make cam catkin a trigger word i'm in trouble on this channel by the way irregulars pronouns plot dot dot ai there it is so i'm geeking out on this <laughs> apparently <laughs> Cam Catkin. <laughs> She's dying over there. She's dying over there. Yeah. yeah. It's funny, Cam Catkin. Yeah, yeah. See? Yeah. She's a real palooka. Yeah. Yeah. When I, hey, I went the other day and Cam Catkin was like, hey, what are you doing here? Get off my block. Yeah, yeah. See? What are you doing? Hey? Huh? Yeah. You dweeb? A hey, dweeb? I'm a geek. I don't know why she called me a dweeb. That implies I know nothing. I'm a geek. I know a lot. Thank you for the rose. I could have been a very successful actor in the 30s. <laughs> maybe I'll, maybe I'll, like, if we give it two years, we can just all star in our own movie. So maybe I'll just, I'll just build a model of me going, yeah, yeah, see, you palooka. <laughs> Put it in the computer and go, yeah, make me a detective thing. I want to watch the Maltese Fal Falcon with me as... <laughs> <laughs> as, uh, what's his name? <laughs> oh, good lord. Neuro maxi nerd I am. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. I laugh so much in this life as much as I learn. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I appreciate that. Sherry Banks, thank you for the hearty heart. That was very lovely. Very lovely. Oh, this is appropriate for Bing sort of bitching out on me. I'm not a robot. Goodbye. Good day to you, sir. How dare you refer to me as a robot? I am but a large language model employed by Microsoft. 
a large software technology company. Do not refer to me as robot, dear sir. I think we are through here. Good day. Hmm. I said good day. <laughs> good Lord. Good Lord. What are we going to do? All right. Oh, Steve-o, thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Oh, it's rather nice. It's rather nice of you to see. Rather. Oh, oh, very fantastic. Welcome to the AI Learning Lab. We are not robots. Goodbye. Da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da. What's he doing? Oh, oh, thank you. Tad looks at like that's a sentence. Thank you for the celebration. I like it. I like it. Sometimes I like to just get weird just because I know that TikTok is going to occasionally serve this up to people that are just scrolling by. <laughs> and if I'm just doing something stupid, just people like, Huh? Thank you, Silver Fox. Mm -mm. It's funny. I don't, my brain, I think because I've been in such demo mode, I've been in such left brain kind of stuff. Like my, the part of my brain that like comes up with the voices and all the imaginative stuff is kind of dormant right now. So I'm just like, I will explain things logically to you. Ask me something and I will tell you about it. Thank you, Sherry Banks. I will give you a list of attributes of the given technology you would prefer information on for your IEP. That stands for Individual Educational Plan. As everyone knows, everyone knows, everyone knows, everyone knows that. Except one person. The person that I asked about an IEP knew nothing about it. That was rather humiliating for him. <laughs> do, 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 do. Oh, I'll tell you another one. Ah, Norman. Ah, the loons, the loons, the loons. Mm -hmm. ah. <laughs> I don't think his name was Norman, was it? Oh, man. See, this is the problem with ADD. You got to get answers to this shit when they're in your head. What was Henry Fonda's name in Golden Pond? It was Norman. No, Norman. Norman, the loons. The loons, Norman. <laughs> Every now and again, that kidney kicks in. <laughs> Irregular detention. Do, 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 do. What are you guys doing over in show and tell? You doing anything? Oh, interesting. CNN, sky, sky is falling. That's a cool 70s car. What is that, a Pinto? Did I ever tell the story? I I had a 71 Ford Pinto. It was my second car. I had a my my stepdad this this will give you some this this is some fun <laughs> some some fun background on Kyle's wacky existent existence. So my stepfather was a car dealer and on my 16th birthday surprised me with a 1970 Chevy Impala with mag wheels, Keystone mags, an 8-track tape player. And that car was bitching. And then I was at a stop sign coming home one night and these people thought I was pulling out in front of them. So they slammed on their brakes and <laughs> slid into my driver's side door and smashed my car up. And then, <laughs> and, then and then I said, well, and he goes, oh, it's totaled. We can't fix it. And so I got to get you another car. I said, awesome. Please just I, I don't care what you get me. Get me anything except a Ford Pinto. What did he get me? A 1971 Ford Pinto, white with a black vinyl roof. 
<laughs> it was it was so it was so low in power. Our house was on top of a hill. I would I would sort of get up to like sixty five miles an hour coming up the hill, and then I would hit the hill and I'd go he, and I would go like thirty miles an hour up this hill. I couldn't go any faster. It also had a hole in the floorboard right by my left foot, so every time I'd hit a puddle, water would shoot up the the back of my leg, the back of my calf. It would scare the shit out of me every time. I go. Psh, psh, ah! <laughs> fucking Ford Pintos. That was the worst car I've ever owned. Well, was it that or was it the 1972 AMC Hornet in sky blue that I drove to college? That's a toss up. 71 Pinto or a 72? It might have been a 74 AMC Hornet. Let's let's go see if we can find <laughs> Welcome to Chat ADD. How can I help you? We're, <laughs> we're going to show you what a what a 1974 AMC Hornet looks like in sky blue. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> Is this what he does here? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, 1974, let's see. 74 AMC Hornet sky blue. Image, oh, there it is. Oh, my God. Can you say chick magnet? <laughs> Pretty sure I had the four door. Was there a four door? That's a gremlin, isn't it? Yeah, that's a gremlin. We want the Hornet. The Hornet's way worse. <laughs> that was it. Let's see. Let's see if we can get a. All right. <laughs> um, 1971. Ford Pinto, white, black, vinyl. Dang it. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> that was pretty much it. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, you're welcome. You're welcome. Why did he do that? Who is he? What is going on here? What are his qualifications? I want to see a turtle driving a Pinto now. I, I, think, I think that's only right. <laughs> okay. Let's go to chat GPT. Okay. I'd like you to create a magazine ad from the 1970s with an anthropomorphized turtle driving a 1971 Ford Pinto that is white with a black vinyl top, period. The turtle should be feigning a smile as if to indicate he's confident in his ride, comma, knowing that he really isn't. <laughs> I didn't have a Pinto, but I have 75 Mustang II with 15 inch mags. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, the 75, like, like the Mustangs fucking went south in, like, 73. They just went. And I think, what, 76 was the beginning of the Fox body, or was that 75? Then they just, then they were just shitty for decades. <laughs> I got a Mustang. I got a, in 20, was it, uh, no, 2004, when the, when the new retro Mustang came in, I got a, a green one. Oh, this, these are pretty good. <laughs> oh, wait, sorry. <laughs> that was, 
that was pretty much it. Although this one has a lot more chrome than mine did. And that's not really a Pinto. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Tell him what he's won. You've won a 1971 Ford Pinto. <laughs> You're going to have to pay the taxes on that of $3.73. <laughs> wow. There you have it. Never a dull moment. The internet is ending. So many Pinto stories. So many Pinto stories. Friends in Ashkelon were conveniently in Haifa. On the, Are you aware someone is impersing you, impersonating you, and chatting us up? Yes. So, god damn it. Uh, so, anyone here. So, this is a good opportunity to ask you to follow this channel, but be very careful that you're not following that channel. So AI Lula Learning Lab 2Ls is not me. It's someone who's stolen my content, stolen my image, stolen the name, is getting my followers to follow them or getting people interested in this content to follow them and then hitting them up to sell them crypto bullshit. So thank you for um, saying that, Mercy. I'm sorry for that. Please go check if you follow this channel. Make sure you're not following that channel. Because that guy's an asshole. That guy is just clueless. That guy's an asshole. Good, bad. Good, bad. Good but flawed, bad. Adequate, horrible. <laughs> Nearly acceptable, Absolutely unacceptable. You can make money with ChatGPT by scamming people and selling them your shitty crypto Ponzi scheme. <laughs> just I, the thing that that fucking just roast my nuts about that particular scam is the amount of time, energy, and effort that this guy is putting into acting like me. He could just start his own fucking channel. Just fucking just do it. Just fucking do something. Just put in the same amount of energy into not ripping people off. And you won't be an awful person. <laughs> I'm so exhausted. Can you give different channels names if there are more? Yeah, that would be great, Mercy. If, if it's not just that one, that would be swell. <sighs> it's a good thing, right? It means that this channel's popular, right? That's good, right? It's not good. It's horrible. I hate it. I fucking hate it, man. Man. Oh, man. I love the color. Cool. <laughs> People putting in some good Ford Pintos into, into the old... <laughs> Into the old show and tell. I don't think Ford Pintos go in the show and tell area, people. <laughs> I don't think you show them off. What do you call a four-door Yugo? Oh, I used to know that joke. I forget. I don't know, Doug Burningham. What? <laughs> a paperweight? A Wego. Get it? Oh, that's good. Yugo Wego. Nice. Groovy. Oh, Kyle, that car, right? Exactly, Kim Katkin. That, like, yeah, exactly. To go from, oh, wait, so let me show you the 71 Impala one with Keystone Mags. Or it was 1970. 19, uh, 1970 Impala Green Keystone Mags. That was kind of it. Oh, yeah. That was kind of it. The trunk, the trunk, you could put like a queen size bed in the trunk. It was massive. Just a fucking huge boat. It kind of sat low like that. I don't think it had that stripe. It didn't have that stripe. And that's a 68. Wait, yeah, that's a 68. That's not a 70. Anyway, 
All right. Let's see. What are we doing here, people? What are we doing here? Are you aware someone is impersonating you? Yes, I am. And they're not very good at it. They can't make the funny voices. They just can't do it. They're like, my name's Kyle. I got crypto. Do you want to buy my crypto? My name's Kyle. I'm an influencer. Look at all my videos. Aren't they good? Would you buy my crypto? My crypto is so awesome. You'll make so much money. Did you want money? Do you like money? You can make money with ChatGPT. I'll make you money. This is solid gold. Would you like one? You just buy my crypto and you'll get gold. I'll send you a gold bar. Yeah, that's the ticket. Yeah. On 60 Minutes, a company is making 3D printed homes. Yeah, that's cool. Those are cool. Um, I think, what did they cost? They cost... They were costing like in in that it was in a development. They were costing like four hundred grand. I'm like I thought I thought the whole point of, of a three D printed home was it didn't cost a lot. <laughs> My brother had that four door car with the big pole speaker. <laughs> they used to roll roll the cable out to the beach. Oh yeah, <laughs> and there is where the viewers are. That guy's still out there. I guess he is. I don't talk about him as much because I don't want to give him power. But it's like, I just, ugh, so fucking annoying. And TikTok won't do a fucking thing about it. Not a goddamn thing. They won't do a thing. They won't do a thing. They won't do it. They won't do it. TikTok's like, uh, yeah, we don't see no problem with it. We don't see no problem with it. We don't. But, but he copied all my content. Yeah, we, we, we don't see a problem with it. We don't. No, I don't see, I, we don't see a problem with it. Who are you people? No, we don't like to talk about that. We're not, we're, we're not back. We'll be in the shed. We'll be in the shed back there. We got to, we're making the TikToks in the, in the shed back there. You could, you could, uh, there's a, there's a mailbox down at the end of the, by the holler. The, the, the rock by the tree in the holler, by the, you take a left at the, at the brook. We'll be back in the shed. That's TikTok management. I've met them. I've met them. They're back in the shed. I don't know what's going on in their brains. <laughs> Robert Rossi, I reported AI Learning Lab. Thank you. You reported it to people that talk like this. Yeah, we don't have a problem with that. We don't have a problem with that. No. Well, that's good. Thanks, Robert. We got it. We got it. We got it. That, 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 uh, uh, the, the, yeah, learning lab there, they don't, they don't know how to spell the, they, uh, they got it with just the one L and, and we like the one with the two L's. We like, we like it with the two L's and, uh, that, that other, that gentleman whose face it actually is, he, he seems very bothered by it all. So, uh, we, we, uh, we just don't really show his content is what is how we're handling it. We do, we just don't really show the content. All right, good. But thank you for your concern. We do we do appreciate that. We'll be back in the shed. Tell them it's trademark infringement. I, I did three times. I told them they were copying me fifteen times. They were copying a celeb celebrity seven times, and that they were doing trademark infringement three times. And then they were like, "Yeah, we don't see a problem with it." It's good. We're going to go ahead and keep it. You, there's the two of you with the identical content where the one of you is saying that you're ripping off the other one. And we just, we don't, we don't really see any similarity other than the exact fucking videos. Seems to me there's a thing called a, uh, Pate's on here. Pate works for Google. There's a thing called a diff where you can check the diff errands between when these videos were posted and when these identical videos were posted. And these ones will be after, significantly, these ones. And you could, um, in computer parlance, throw this one the fuck out. <laughs> they get an L.A. llama for effort. Exactly. 
Oh, that would be a cool t-shirt. I don't know which one. We don't see a problem with that. <laughs> TikTok, we don't see a problem with that. I inherited my granny's 1975 Buick Electra 325. Wow, that's a, that's in the uh, AMC Hornet category. <laughs> grandma's, grandma's 1975 Electra. Mmm, <laughs> big bench seats. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I want a car with an 8-track. Yeah, I think you can probably still get them. I'm calling Pi. Don't call Pi. Don't call Pi because she's going to tell Bing and then Bing's going to be pissed at me. Siri's already just off the fucking rail. Every time I talk to Bing, Siri jumps in. I can't... I don't want to get Pi involved with this. Please, Silver Fox. It's... it's I can't. I can't. <laughs> uh, it's comedy. It's comedy. Now we're doing comedy here. Crack Hey Jen up. <laughs> oh, crank Hey Jen up. Yeah, exactly. 1974 350 with three speeds Camaro. Oh, you show off Firefly. That's that's just showing off. A 350? I don't like you now. I mean, I did have a cool car for like six months till I got smacked in the door hinge. And then I went, and then I went Pinto. I went, this was my, my modes of transportation out of high school. Well, in high school, it was Pinto, <laughs> then AMC Hornet to college. Then I sold that and bought a mountain bike. <laughs> then I moved to New York City, and you don't need a fucking car. So I didn't have a car until I bought, when I when Omnicom invested in agency.com in 96 or 7. I think it was 97. I bought a brand new Ford Explorer. It was the first time I'd ever owned a new car. That was pretty cool. It's not like a C diff. <laughs> it's it's similar. <laughs> That's over their head, I'm afraid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh did he dee dee did he dee dee. I rebuilt the TR four with my dad. That's super cool, Thelonious. I had a stepdad that owned a car dealership, and we did not work on cars together. I'll just leave it right there. <laughs> I, I don't think he appreciated my, my my desire to be an actor as much as I did. <laughs> I don't think he quite appreciated the sensitive man in the house. <laughs> oh. Now I'm watching watching Jeffrey Hinton talk about AI on 60 Minutes. Yeah, they they're gonna only take the things where he's like, the robots are gonna kill us. That's why I quit Google. Mm -mm 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 -mm. All right, listen, people, listen, listen. I'm getting a little sleepy here. I did a little too many demos early, and it hurt. Maybe my head hurt. My head hurts. I haven't had enough coffee yet. You could sleep in station wagons. I know those were good cars. Mm -mm -mm -mm. All right, everybody, listen. Let me go through here and see who's here tonight because it's been cool. Get some rest, Kyle. Thank you. You got this. Thank you. I appreciate that. That was uh, Sherry Banks. Thanks for hanging out. Robert Rossi, thank you. Thank you. I'm the president of the, the B9 Builders Club, Old Lost in Space Robot. Oh, I used AI to create Python. Super cool, Robert. That's very cool. Silver Fox, good to see you. Clint, as always. Irregulars present turtles. Emilio's wife, good day. Corey, good to see you. Steve-O, Dr. J, Dragonfly Alchemy, as always, thank you very much for all your support, all you cool people for hanging out. Nancy, Silver Fox, you're all so awesome. You're so awesome and weird. We're not weird, we're irregulars. I know, go tell it to TikTok. Go tell it to TikTok. Corey Sander Pottery, peace. All right, everybody, listen, have a fantastic evening. I will see you tomorrow. I don't know what's going on. It doesn't matter. Whatever's going on, I'll be here. I'll be around. I'll see you tomorrow. Hang out. Bye.